So, last week I talked about upgrading the visuals of my game because I wanted to make the screenshots more interesting and I worked a lot on the fog of war to make it more interesting. But that's only the first part of this big update I'm working on. Because you see, I spent a lot of time working on every single item I've added in the game to make sure that they brought something unique and distinct and fun to the gameplay. But that means that it's quite a lot of work every time I want to add an item. And right now I have maybe just a dozen weapon in the game. And it makes it a little bit difficult when I'm talking about the game because I go like, yeah, I got lasers and stuff. But it's missing a little bit, so I want to work on more content. So let's start with a little bit of game design opinion. And let's be honest here, I'm not a game designer, so take this with a grain of salt. But I think there's a lot of different ways of doing a loot system. On one extreme, you have something that's completely randomly generated. I'm thinking about games like Diablo 3 or Borderlands. They, you know, randomize everything, including the stats of the weapon. And then you have games that, like for example, NetHack, which will have randomized drops, but the loot itself is predefined. For example, a two-handed sword will always do 3d6, or a dagger is always going to do 1d4. And personally, and that's really just my personal opinion, I kind of prefer the second system with predefined loot. But this got me thinking, why would someone choose a dagger over a two-handed sword that obviously does more damage? And the way I figured is because the dagger synergized well with other stuff. Maybe you can call it combo or sets, but there's some kind of trade-off when you choose one weapon over the other. And that's when I realized that my game is fun right now because you have to make these kind of combination or synergies or trade off to build an interesting setup of weapon and utilities and ships that combine well together. For example, the Vorg alien race in my game has a lot of shield and are very, very resilient to damage because of this. But I have a weapon in the game that pierces through shield, so equipping a couple of those before tackling Vorg ships is a really good idea. But the railgun is nearly useless against the Jurg, which use regenerative plating and usually don't have any shield. So I really like this kind of ideas and I want to put more of those in the game. And that's where I was thinking when I was trying to figure out how to add more content to my game. But let's talk a little bit about my current architecture. You see, every time I want to add an item in the game, I have to go and create a new JSON file for this item, then I have to create all the components as JSON arrays and dictionaries and stuff like that. And then when this item is done, I have to go and put it in all the loot drops for like the level loot and then the uh, enemies for each type of enemies. I have to balance it differently. Then I have to add it into the shop inventories for all the merchants. And then I have to go in Godot and I have to create sprites for it. I have to create animations if I need to, maybe sound effects. And then I have to link all of this back into the original JSON for the item. That's a lot of work and I wasn't sure if I wanted to create hundreds of new items using this method. So for my own sanity, I started thinking of maybe other ways I could generate a lot of items in my game. Since I didn't really know what I wanted to do, I started by going into Google Spreadsheet and I created a list of all the attributes in the game that could potentially be modified by an item or an equipment or a weapon or something like that. And then when I had an idea of all the things I could play with, I tried to imagine some kind of ship build. I'm not saying that these are the thing I want to be in the game. I'm just trying to see what kind of stuff I want to be able to create. So for example, I was thinking maybe you want to have an assassin ship and this assassin ship has extra long range weapon and is extra fast so he can kite enemies and maybe he's harder to hit because he has some mimetic skin or something. 
Um, but if he gets hit, he's pretty guaranteed to die because he has no shield or anything. And then on the other hand, you could have like a, a tank that's just really, really heavily armored and heavily shielded, but he can barely move. He's like a moving fortress. But if you get too close to him, oh, watch out because he's going to destroy you. And these are the kind of trade-offs I would really like to implement in the game. So these use cases gave me a few ideas of what kind of um, variation I'd like to bring to my weapons. And interestingly, when I was thinking about this, I was often describing these items with some kind of prefix. Like, you know, I already have the laser turret, but when I was thinking about these things, I was thinking about like, I'd like to have a precision laser turret or something, or I'd like to have a heavy shield, or maybe a lightweight shield, or maybe a minetic shield. And all these prefixes started to create some kind of idea of having modifier that I could apply on items and utilities to change slightly their statistics. But the interesting part with that is that if this is just a list of modifier, then I can apply these modifier, for example, to all my weapons. So I can have like a precision laser turret or a precision missile launcher or a precision railgun or something. And they would all come from the same source, if you will. But that's not to say that I wouldn't have been able to do it with my current system. I could have just created a different weapon for all of those variation. It's just that I wasn't sure if creating hundreds of new JSONs, adding them all to the loot table, would be a really worthwhile investment in my time. And then managing all that every time I want to tweak something, for example, let's say I want to change the base damage of the laser turret, then I'd have to go through like all the 20 variation on the laser and try to modify all of those damages. And that just seems like a little bit crazy. But on the other hand, creating this new architecture of like variation or modifiers or synergies system that I could tack on top of normal weapon, well, that seems like a lot of changes to the really core of my current architecture. So I had to balance which one is going to take me less time and which one is going to be better in the long run. And I think in the long run, improving my architecture and making it more flexible is probably a good thing. So I decided to go with this kind of modifier architecture change. But how was this implemented in my game, you ask? Well, I'm glad you ask, because this was not an easy thing to change. You see, I've said many times that you can't really have a generic system that does everything, because then it's not a system, it's just like real life or something. But in this case, I really wanted something as generic as possible, something that I could really do pretty much anything with. And I wasn't quite sure how I was going to pull that off. So I started asking around a little bit on my Twitter and on my Discord server to see if someone would have some clever ideas. And then someone on Twitter said that I could use something like the um, command pattern. That's actually an interesting idea because the command pattern is often used when you want to have the ability to do redo and undo in your code because it'll encapsulate like a, a a command, uh, like an effect, and then you can have a do method that will apply this effect and an undo method that will remove this effect, which is very similar to what I want to do when you equip an item, it adds some effect to your ship, and then when you remove it, it removes these effects. But the thing is, is I realized that my code is not really object-oriented right now, and I just don't know how I could implement the command pattern inside this data-driven architecture I have right now. But then someone on my Discord said that in a data-driven environment, if I want to do everything, what I need is a new language. And that scared the hell out of me because this is something I would definitely recommend no one does because there's just so many pitfalls. I mean, from errors in your interpreter to people trying to do stuff they're not supposed to do to weird typos that break everything, it's just, so dangerous to do something like that. But then I'm not trying to make a new GDescript or a new Python language. I'm just trying to add a few command or keywords into my data structure. And to be honest, I kind of did something like that for the description in my ships because I didn't want to hard code like some values like weapon damage or shield or hull because I didn't want to 
have to remember to change these values in the description every time I changed it for the ship data or something. So I created this system of curly bracket, a little bit like a format string, where I can put key values separated by dot and between curly braces and it'll be automatically replaced by the proper value in the description. And so I started thinking, maybe I could do something like that. In a big project, I really wouldn't recommend it unless you have some amazing UI for editing your language with like compilation errors and stuff like that because there's going to be a lot of people working on this and people who don't have access to the source code so they can't check to figure out what's happening when you know something is not working right but in my case I'm a solo programmer I'm working on my own game so maybe these problems don't really apply to me so here's what I have I created inside my JSONs of each of my item a list of potential variation that could be applied on top of this item. And then in a JSON, I have a list of modifiers that this variation is going to apply to the item. For example, I could have something like self crit chance bonus 0.05 to give a 5% critical chance bonus to the item. And then I created a new behavior that is responsible for managing these effects, like instantiating them, attaching them, making sure that the effects are applied. And then I have a method get bonus modifier that will fetch a base name and will return the bonus effect for this attribute. So for example, my attribute in the previous case would be crit chance bonus. And the uh, self underscore at the beginning is just a way to say that this effect should only be applied to the, for example, current weapon. But I have other modifier like a global underscore. This would be applied to all the weapons, no matter where it comes from. And then you have other stuff like I created a linked underscore that will apply the bonus to everything except itself. Um, that's maybe a little bit weird, but uh, I really wanted to test to make sure that everything was possible and well, it seems to be working pretty fine. Of course, that's not to say that modifying my architecture to support all of this was easy. Not at all. That created so many issues that I had to fix. And here's just a couple of the bigger ones. At first, when I started working on this, I realized that I considered the item name to be its source file, like uh, for example the laser turret that JSON is the source file for all laser turret. And if you have the same source file, you have the same item. But now that I have variation, I could have a precision laser and a normal laser, and they have the same source file, but they're not the same item. Which means I had some issues with how I identify some of my items. Then there was the fact that once an item was in the player inventory, it wasn't instantiated anymore, so I had no way to modify its attributes. It was whatever is in the JSON as is. I didn't have any modifiers. But now I have to remember what's the variation that's applied on that item. So I had to create a whole new system to support adding modified attributes to an item inside its JSON. So that was a really fun time. And of course, because the game has been released on Steam now, maybe I don't have a lot of players, but I still would like to keep people's save game valid. So every time I've added this new attributes or this new system, I had to think about what happened if you have a save game that doesn't support this system. So I had to add a lot of checks to for null properties to make sure that if this property didn't exist in a previous version, then I fall back gracefully to something that would be working. And then when I finally thought I had everything working, I thought, okay, so an effect is only applied when an item is equipped. So I only need to check items that are equipped for their effects. But then I decided to add an effect that changes how much space an item take when it's in your cargo hold. But when it's in your cargo hold, it's not equipped anymore. So I had to add some new system to support effects for items that are not equipped right now. And then there is, of course, these dynamic properties, these uh, attributes that I add and modify the base stats of a an item or the ships or something. Well, I, I needed a way to show this to the player. I wanted the player to look at the description of an item, for example, and not see the base stats, but the modified stats based on the uh, variation that he's using. And uh, that 
should have been fairly easy, but it took me surprisingly a long time to make it work correctly. But I'm pretty happy with the current design where it's going to show you in different colors if um, this is a bonus or malice and how each variation affects each attribute. So that's pretty cool. I think there's still places for improvement, but uh, for now that's what I have and it took me a long time to make it work. And then of course the last one and the big one is that I have a crafting system in my game. So now I had to wonder well, what happens when you want to craft an item? Does it generate a variation randomly? Or does it have a predefined variation? And um, this is honestly something I'm still kind of working on because uh, it's a pretty big issue. But after fixing most of these uh, little problems, I finally got something working where you can, for example, spawn 10 medium shield and a lot of these will have different variation applied to them that will make them you know stronger faster or cost more energy or something like that which i think is really going to add a lot to the game but it's not quite finished yet i still have a lot of debugging to do i still have to add translation for all the new attributes i added and i still have to balance all of this because right now most of these are kind of prototype just proof of concepts but now I need to really think about what kind of synergies would work well together but I think I'm in the final stretch and I'm really hoping I'll be able to update the game um, this September or maybe early October with all this new content and all these new visuals so that everyone can go and test it out and tell me what you think and if I've improved the game or butchered it. But until next time, see you all in my next episode. Bye!